Welcome to Airborne for Friday, August 2nd. I'm Ashley Hale. Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the FAA finally budges on aircraft certification. We'll take a look at Piper's MoGas Archer, and we'll wrap up our conversation with EAA Chairman Jack Pelton. Those stories and more coming up on this edition of Airborne. With Congress moving the Small Aircraft Revitalization Act through both the House and the Senate with strong bipartisan support, the FAA finally had to budge on the issue. Tom Patton reports. The FAA said in a statement posted on its website Thursday that it would be streamlining the aircraft certification and approval process. That's to keep pace with technological advancements in aviation products and to help the United States maintain global competitiveness. The plan responds to recommendations in the May 2012 Aircraft Certification Process Review and Reform ARC report to enhance the efficiency of getting new products to market while improving safety. The FAA said it's preparing to update the Part 23 regulations that cover design and safety standards for small general aviation aircraft with the goals of increasing safety, decreasing costs, and increasing the installation of safety equipment for general aviation aircraft. From AirVenture 2013 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, for Aero TV, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne at AirVenture 2013. More when we come back in just a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Cub Crafters is unique in that we can design, prototype, and certify and put into production an aircraft. There aren't very many companies in the world that can make that claim. Free Flight, the Texas based company that pioneered the first certified WAS GPS receiver, designs and manufactures high performance avionics, delivering substantial benefits from the next gen airspace transformation. Learn more at www.freeflightsystems.com. 295 and counting. That's the number of lives saved so far by the revolutionary BRS airframe parachute. See and read why BRS can keep you safe at www.brsparachutes.com. Aspen's Trailblazing Evolution 2000 and 2500 systems offer an exclusive total backup capability that steam gauges and competing glass just can't match. With full PFD capability built into the MFD and dual redundant backup batteries, Aspen's Evolution system offers the only glass panel that can effectively eliminate heavy, unreliable steam instruments. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. Piper has had the Archer that it flew from Florida to Oshkosh on 93 unleaded auto gas on display here at AirVenture this week. The company worked with Airworthy Auto Gas LLC out of Phoenix, Arizona to prove the concept in a test flight regime conducted from the company's Vero Beach manufacturing campus. The engine is a Lycoming O360A4M that is approved to burn the high octane premium automotive gasoline. The new Great Lakes being manufactured by Waco Classic Aircraft and which flew for the first time last month is on display at AirVenture this week. Jim Campbell reports. I believe there's a biblical reference that says all things old may be new again. And if you're looking at the Great Lakes, this is the perfect example. The first new production certificate in many, many years. The Great Lakes by Waco, the 2T1A2, is back at $245,000 base price, but giving you tremendous aerobatic capability, a phenomenal little trainer, both from a standpoint of aerobatics and tail dragger. And for me personally, it's the airplane I cut my teeth on aerobatically way, 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 way back when, long before the gray came into the hair here. So for the moment, if you want to see the newest old airplane production-wise here at Oshkosh, you got to come take a look at the Great Lakes. You'll be glad you did. 
For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The talk at Pipistrol this week is about the new Cenas flags. Based on the standard Pipistrol Cenas aircraft with a 50-foot wingspan, the Cenas Flex has the ability to remove the outer wingtips and fit smaller wingtips to configure the aircraft the same as the 40-foot Verus aircraft. The option essentially gives you two aircraft in one. Pipistrol says the airplane is, quote, a fantastic soaring aircraft to extend your flying skills, trying to stay aloft on ridge lifts and thermals, end quote which in less than 10 minutes can be converted to a super economical and comfortable cruiser with a 40-foot wingspan. And the shorter wings also make the aircraft much easier to hangar. You're watching Airborne on Aero TV from AirVenture 2013. More in a moment. Bright, light, and affordable. Sandia Aerospace presents the STX-165 Mode AC Transponder. Check it out at www.sandia.aero. The Eclipse can get you anywhere in almost any kind of condition. This plane is fun. It's a life changer. Every flight is a great experience. It's a remarkable airplane. Just need to fly it. The only way I can really explain how great it is and how fun it is. This AeroCast is sponsored by ForeFlight, makers of intelligent iPhone and iPad apps for pilots. Visit ForeFlight.com to see and hear more about ForeFlight Mobile. With best in class design, touch planning, brilliant pre flight and in flight weather displays, and backed by fanatical pilot support, ForeFlight Mobile is aviation's most popular app. Make the right choice. Fit a Trig TT31 Mode S transponder. It's the easiest plug-and-play retrofit to the KT76A. Install a Trig tray, and it's ADS-B out capable too. Trig. Smart, affordable, and future-proof. Pipistrel's innovative new Alpha Trainer has been designed from the ground up for flying school operations. Powered by a Rotax 80 horsepower engine, the Alpha burns only 2.5 U.S. gallons of fuel per hour at 100 to 108 knots, giving you the opportunity to make flight training cost-effective once again. Be sure to check out the Pipistrel Alpha when you're ready to select your next trainer. Get more info at pipistrel-usa.com. Ballistic Recovery Systems, also known as BRS, is here at AirVenture this week with a brand new whole airframe parachute system for RV-9 and RV-7 aircraft. The bag deployed unit is stowed in a specially designed frame suspended from structural aluminum angles spanning the upper aircraft longerons on each side of the aircraft on the back side of the aft baggage bulkhead. It deploys out of the right side of the fuselage behind the wing and angled upwards. Experimental and other non-certified aircraft don't have to go without modern glass panels, and there are many of them on display here at AirVenture this week. One that stands out is the IEFIS Challenger touchscreen with a 10.4-inch display. All screens on the Challenger can be completely customized by the user, and up to four engine boxes can be used, allowing multi-engine displays or other unique requirements. You're watching Airborne at AirVenture 2013. More when we come back in just a moment. The Oracle Engine Monitoring System offers primary replacement for all engine instrumentation. Certified for most piston GA aircraft, the Oracle will soon be certified for fixed wing turbine and rotorcraft aircraft. Oracle, the best co-pilot you'll ever have. Waco Classic Aircraft now offers the Great Lakes 2T1A2. Inspired by the classic YMF5D, it's smaller but with 180 horsepower, simpler avionics, and fully aerobatic. Waco lets you fly simply for the fun of it. www.wacoaircraft.com Concorde Platinum Series batteries are available for all aircraft and offer extra cranking power, resulting in less draw on the battery per cycle for longer life. Visit booth 2053 at Oshkosh. Concorde, for the heart of your aircraft. 
Welcome back to Airborne here at AirVenture 2013. All this week we've been bringing you portions of an interview ANN's Jim Campbell conducted with EAA Chair Jack Pelton. Today is the final segment of that interview and Jim and Jack talk about the future of the EAA and general aviation as a whole. What's going to happen in regards to the successor search and what's your future with EAA? Well, um, first of all, I am really retired. I have signed up for a commitment of three years as chairman, and that was an elected position that's renewable for another three at the discretion of, of the board. And I'm going to continue on that, continue with my commitment for this three-year chairmanship, and we'll look at the end of three to see whether it's renewable. We wrote an article from the HR Governance Committee in the last Sport Aviation, which I don't know if you had a chance to, to look at, that is a board discussion around the whole concept of what is EA's leadership future look like. And in there, the, it's spelled out that I'm going to be a hands-on chairman, I'm going to be active as the face of EA, and we're going to take our time and not start a search post-air venture, that we're really going to look at the overall structure and see what's needed and just be thoughtful and take our time and see how it kind of plays out. But you're stuck with me for three years. What do you know is coming up this week that particularly excites you, that draws you in, that you think people really need to know about and get their buns here to see? There is an event on Friday that, that I, I know a lot of people may not feel that, you know, it's a movie. It's called Planes. Very, very pivotal, to use your, your term, in that when you go to, to a store and you go down the toilet, it's cars. It's the movie Cars. Planes is going to be a game changer. The movie Planes that they're premiering here, I think, is another opportunity to get that 3- to 12-year-old start playing with airplanes again and getting interested in airplanes and talking about airplanes. So I'm very, very excited about that. The other thing we, we've done is I really like the restored airplanes that have been here for all these years, what we refer to as grand champions. And we're going to host those every day on the plaza. And you're going to see just everything from some of the you know finest home builds to uh, vintage and warbirds that have been champion winners here. And I think that's, that's fun to, to spend time with those. And then I think the, the air show this year is going to be a lot more fun because of the diversity of acts and the fact that it's going to be more entertaining than it has been in the, the prior years. And then there's a whole host of everything else from the, I'm going to be attending one of the forums on, on the Acrosport because I'm interested in uh, finishing a project that I'm working on and building one. So it's a full calendar and we have everything from Jetman, who I mentioned earlier. The neat thing about Jetman is when you get a chance to talk to him, I was trying to feel him out for, has he ever been to Oshkosh? And his first words were, I've been in aviation my whole life. This has always been on my list of the place you have to go. That, for me, just resonates as we, he does understand what we're all about. And he says, I'm all about innovation, which is what founded EAA and the home building movement. So he says, this is where I belong. I can't wait to see it all. I want to be a part of it. I consider myself the ultimate innovator and home builder with the wing that he, he flies. So that's going to be exciting too. I think it will embrace what we're all about and not be a formal major military aerobatic team. It's going to be home builder. Thanks for fighting the good fight, and more important, we're really looking forward to a good week and hope you have a good one as well. Thanks, Jim. And uh, looks like the weather's going to cooperate and, and hope that uh, everybody who has a chance to get out here will take advantage of this year. It is going to be special. And we'll let that be the last word for our airborne coverage from AirVenture 2013 here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We want to give a special thanks to the ANN staff and all of our volunteer stringers who've worked so hard this week gathering videos and stories from here at Whitman Regional Airport. And if you've missed any of our AirVenture coverage, remember you can always check it out at www.aero-news.net. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.